Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes in the Shed. Right, as I said in a previous video, I was going to sublet a load of engine components. And that's something I've done. I actually uh, went yesterday and uh, took my engine to the place that's going to be rebuilding it. I'm going to tell you all about it and uh, tell you all about the place, tell you all about the guy that's doing it. And I'm going to tell you a story about my pistons. All right, let's go to the bench. Okay, so, uh, oh, let's get some light on the subject. Uh, there we go. Right, so as I said, um, uh, subletting a load of stuff, and the place I chose to to sublet to uh, was a place called Sega Engineering uh, over in Debenham, Norfolk. Yeah, that's where. Um, uh, great guy, uh, proper no nonsense, old school engineer, and uh, he's, he's got a great Facebook group um, where he shows the work he's been doing on these engines. And it's impressive, right? I mean, the stuff he does, it, it looks brilliant. And he puts some sensible modifications in place and things like that. And just does a lovely, lovely job. Uh, I got my uh, barrels and pistons off him for uh, the Project Tribza engine that I built on, on the channel. So you might be able to see that um, uh, from a couple of years ago. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a link to his website and a link to his Facebook group in the description of this video. Um, and uh, it was very kind enough. I mean, the good, the measure I think of a place to have work done is if they're too busy to do your work, right? That obviously means they're good, right? If people are too busy, that means they're very, very good at what they do. If you get someone who gives you all time in the world because they've got nothing else to do, maybe they're not that good, right? Um, now, probably not the cheapest place in the world. Uh, doesn't matter because I want a proper job done on this engine, right? So, um, I'm a big fan of talking to people in person, right? Especially if you're, you're discussing work to be done on your engine. And Patrick, he's, he's really good. And I'm sure I could talk to him over the phone and ship him my parts and he would have just done it. But I thought, no, you know what I'll do? I'll drive down there, uh, a couple of hours in the car, drive down there and uh, have a chat to him, right? And have a look at his setup, right? I was really intrigued to see it anyway. So, drove down yesterday, went and uh, had a chat to the guy. Proper bloke, dead straight, no nonsense. Um, it told me everything I needed for my engine. Uh, upsold me a couple of uh, shiny bits, you know, like you know, I've gone for the more expensive valves, and I am I'm putting four valves in instead of two. Um, but he was explaining how he machines the seats, and if he machines the re -machine, machines the seats on my head, uh, then these might be out, and I'm going to end up grinding all of his work away just to make them work. So we're going to do that. Uh, so he's doing the cylinder head for me, he's doing the main bushes and stuff like that. Um, but I got talking to him while I was there, because he's going to do a rebore on my barrels. And um, I thought, right, because I looked at my pistons, and uh, it said on the top of it, 001. Right? And I thought I couldn't see the decimal point, so I assumed it was 10 thou over. So I, th I thought it had been bored out. Well, I measured the bore, and it seemed like a standard, but a bit bigger. And so that's a bit weird. It wasn't 10 thou over. And, um, you know, rebores generally go 10 thou, 20 thou, 30 thou over, whatever. Um, and this piston, right, is off uh, Project Tribza, right? And it's one of the um, uh, ones that I replaced. Because that was, if you look at this one on the top here, I'm going to give you a zoom in. Uh, if I can get it to focus. Oh, I don't know if you're going to see that. But that is 30 thou over, right? So it's had three rebores. Uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 thou over. Or there was significant damage and they had to rebore it a lot, right? So that's 30 thou over piston. Um, so I put, I had, you know, tri the tribs are now standard bore, right? So I needed smaller pistons. Now on mine, out of this Tiger 90, it said 001. Uh, so I thought there was a decimal point. There wasn't, right? Now this is interesting. I'd never heard of this, but Patrick was explaining it to me. The pistons that were in my engine were one thou oversized, which is incredibly rare, right? I mean, you wouldn't do one thou. That's like honing it, right? So um, these one thou pistons were standard fit in the factory uh, occasionally, right? So if the factory uh, bored the cylinder and there was maybe a slight defect or something like that, then hone them out a bit more, 
and they'd put one thousandth of an inch over pistons in to fit so they'd fit the the piston to the engine so my engine had had one thou over pistons uh, so quite rare pistons so I was going to keep them uh, and Pat said oh well you know let me check the uh, the ring grooves for you All right so he, he put them through his vapor blaster to clean them up and found we found a crack which ran from here on the edge of the Goodgen pin all the way up, all the way to the crown. Uh, I actually got a video of him talking about it and explaining it. I'll, I'll, I'll put that on next, right? So, um, yeah, good job I didn't retain those and keep them because they would have broken off, literally broken off. Uh, the other thing I noticed about the pistons that were in my bike, uh, this this is the Project Tribza ones, right? And these are the rings. So you got uh, the top ring for the compression, and then you got the scrape ring, uh, which goes on second, then you've got the oil seal ring here, which goes on third, right? So you've got three rings. If I give you a bit of a bit of a close-up on those, uh, it's not going to focus, maybe. But, yeah, those those are the rings, right? So three uh, chunky solid rings. <clears throat> now, the rings that were in the Tiger 90 are these ones, uh, right here. And they're different. Right, and I didn't know uh, that these things existed right, until uh, Patrick was explaining about it. But if you look at them, each ring is actually two rings, right, like that, made out of very thin material. And then the oil seal ring is, again, two rings and a, a, a wiggly ring as well. Now, apparently, these were an aftermarket thing that you could buy... And the idea behind having these, let's see if I can clean them a little bit. The idea behind having these super thin rings was that you actually got two piston rings in each slot. And when you put them in the engine, you kind of offset the gap. And apparently it was good at reducing uh, smoke out of the exhaust and stuff. If you were getting a bit of a blow of smoke out of the exhaust past the rings, you could put these in and uh, they would compensate for it. <clears throat> a bit like putting a uh, stop leak in your radiator, right? Now, these rings, that they've got a name, and I cannot for the life of me remember the name. Someone will know. Uh, but they were invented by a company that used to market them for the job of cutting smoke out of an engine. But this wire, this, this kind of ring material, come off a big reel. And the one day, the guys making them cut a load of material off to make the rings put it on a shelf like that and it fell and it went like this and went down and all the rest of the coils followed it and someone said oh you know what that'd be a really good toy for kids and that ladies and gentlemen is the company that invented the slinky toy you know that goes down the steps and stuff like that so these are made out of the same material as the slinky very interesting uh, and they were never very good uh, they didn't really do what they were supposed to do, and they were a bit shit. So, I had bit shit rings in, and my pistons were cracked. So, that's the story behind my pistons. So, good job I'm actually doing a rebore and replacing the pistons. Uh, good save, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, went down to see Patrick, and he, he blasted my pistons and found that out. So, let me show you the video of Patrick talking about my pistons. Pistons here. I've got one thou over written on them, and they would be factory graded pistons from the factory back in 1964. And on the outside of them, having just be blasted all the carbon off, even with my poor eyesight at my time in life, I thought there's a mark down here. And when you look, it goes right the way through that gudgeon pin boss. And it goes right the way through that gudgeon pin boss. And down there, that piston is just, this one's the same. And that gudgeon pin boss. And that gudgeon pin boss is cracked. And that would have been in two halves and wrecked your engine. And I'll tell you what, it's right up to the top of the crown. From there, Oh yeah. yeah, I can see, yeah. And I've never seen one 
So you see, people think bead blasting things is um, a waste of time. But in actual fact, without bead blasting it, you would have never noticed that and you could have been fooled into believing that that was a serviceable item. Yeah. And it is. Job done. Yeah. Good spot. That's probably when I was racing my next door neighbour on his Black Shadow. I was think it probably was when you probably hit the tum mark. But yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So there you go, there's my piston story. Uh, so now you know where slinkies came from and now you've seen uh, my cracked pistons and heard Patrick explaining why that's bad. I've left those pistons with Patrick uh, so he can uh, tell the story to all his mates and uh, recommend to people that they uh, get their pistons uh, uh, vapor cleaned so you can see if there's any damage in them. Um, so uh, the other thing, while I was there, um, he very kindly, uh, well, I had a chat to him and I said, look, I said, I said, would you like to be on my uh, YouTube video, right? And, uh, you know, put you on a little bit. And he's like, yeah, yeah. He said, um, he says, of course I will. He said, do you want me to show you around the workshop? And I said, yeah, that'd be fantastic, actually. So, uh, bless him. I mean, he's the busiest guy in the world, right? But he spared loads of time for me and, uh, uh, which I was, I was, I was very thankful for. And, uh, we had a good old chin wag and, uh, and uh, talked about his machinery and stuff like that and how busy he was. And um, we went through, did a bit of a quote. We looked at the prices of all the bits and what it's going to cost and all that, uh, which I'm not going to share because um, uh, my wife might watch this video. So um, yeah, it was it was really good. So um, uh, in the meantime, I have been polishing some bits and things, getting everything ready, and oh, everything's getting ready, coming together. So I just wanted to show you some shiny bits. Look at this. So, um, so yeah, he's going to do the work on my engine. Uh, it's going to take a few weeks. So I'll probably it's probably going to be post Christmas when I get it. Um, and I, he did he did bless him. He did give me a workshop tour of his uh, of his workshop. He's got some fantastic machinery, uh, some really good stuff. There's plenty of shiny Triumph bits kicking around. Um, interestingly. I know some of you following this video channel uh, are also watching Dom Chinia of uh, the repair shop do his Tiger 90. And uh, we have had a little bit of banter between us and uh, talked about racing them after the videos are complete and stuff like that. Interestingly, uh, Pat said, uh, I had a guy called Dom uh, uh, call me and he wanted, he wanted to film his engine being done. Right. So, uh, but like I said, Pat's super busy, right? And he... he he said, I can't take time out of a day for doing all, all video work and stuff like that. But bless him, he did do a workshop tour for me. So I'm very blessed. Uh, I think it's because I went down and had a chat to him, right? You know, drank his tea, stuff, you know, stroked his dog, that sort of stuff. And he gave me a, a workshop tour. Now, I'll play the workshop tour for you. It's, uh, it's eight, nine minutes long or something. Uh, but I only had my phone with me. I didn't have a microphone or anything like that. It's a noisy old place because the machine's going... And he wasn't going to shut down so I could get the sound right on my video. So he's explaining about what machinery he's got and how he does it and everything. But the sound quality is terrible and I must apologise for that. But I will play you the video uh, because it's just interesting to see his workshop. Uh, it's got some amazing gear down there. Uh, the, the, the kind of mill he's got which faces the cylinder heads and cleans the, the mating face for the head gasket stuff up. It's really nice. Uh, he got a load of brand new uh, castings on the bench heads uh, that he was that he was fettling up by hand uh, and machining up. Uh, he showed me his little boring tools and the new boring machine he's going to wire in, his inspection area, his, his cleaning machines, all that sort of stuff. Brilliant, brilliant workshop, properly tooled up. So I'll play you the video. And uh, I, again, I apologise for the sound quality. You might be able to hear some stuff if you turn the volume up high. Okay. Be ready. Uh, okay, right. Still right looking, here. looking in the movies. Action. Action. There you go. This is my latest acquisition. It's a rubber seat cut. Full airflow. So that just floats to where you want it. And it's quite a nice little thing because it's variable speed. You can go as fast as you slow as you like. So that, that float on air? Yeah. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. And that's got 360 swivel fixed in here. I've got to be careful because we're 
So we've got the headphones swivel to whatever height you want. And over here we've got spirit level which allows us to make the angle of the cutting head and the job all in one. So it's exactly the same. So it will cut perfectly upright. So you can adjust the head in terms of angle this way and you can adjust this head in terms of angle using this knob here to bring your head backwards and forwards to where you want. And then there's a whole selection of parlets and everything that we use that have to fit the guides correctly. And that's the seat cutting bit. And you can bore out the seats in as well as that. Around here is where we do the bore. Or the motorcycle bore. We've got an SPS and a little purple copy. That's the stores over there. Got two cleaning machines. And the Virgo ST361, which is 1.35 metre um, travel. And then over here, just got the home of the park. This is just like for doing manual doors. We've got a big San Rosso copy there for doing large cylinder blocks, but we haven't got many of them at the moment. That's my. I bought that scale there, but it's yet to actually be commissioned. The two Van Normans and the SPS, we don't use very often. The ultrasonic thing over there, and over here, The main bolt of the work. The main bolt is done in the chain shop. So through here. Two blasters. One which is an aqua blast. So it's wet. We run that uh, a lower pressure to give a brighter, better finish. And then we've got the dry blast there, which is a heavier bead. And we run that slightly higher to get the worst of the rubbish off. You do not, you just have to be careful where you rest the fire level. So we do the outside, all from get places. Over here, Near big enough. And at the moment, I'm just feathering these triumph heads. They're all brand new castings. They've got to be finished off. So I'm in the, in the process of actually just finishing the pulse on these. There's one there that hasn't been done. So you can see there's quite a lot of metal got to come out of the port. So they're all got to be finished off. And then unfortunately this part of the workshop is a little machine that we achieved the super finish job. So this, this head here has is, is had the seats put in and the guides and everything else. And its last job is just to just take off the smallest amount we can just to really get rid of that erosion there which can't it just and there's erosion there look there's actually you can see that's where the fire ring has been eroded by a flame path and there's another one there look yeah. which won't seal won't seal so that's just a job for later on tomorrow here we do the valve faces. It's just the graveyard of some of these that get pulled out. It's <laughs> get down when we get to it. There's another secret guys machine, which has been superseded by the nice white one. These lovely mills here are out of commission at the moment. They will be. This task for the mill is the one that does the majority of the work. It's a very versatile three axis CNC. The BBC has announced that a new site on BBC2 will be become a half hour discussion show. It's a part of a wide range of plans to save money, but the BBC will be lengthened to an hour. Carrying aside, there's all of them. 
Shining. <laughs> and then there's a graveyard of machine tools again. <laughs> And then pretty large toss that's ever to be seen. Two metre bed. It's a lovely machine. Oh that's all bed. I thought I thought that was a table. It's not that's all the bed, isn't it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Just use that part. Just don't touch. Occasionally, we do have to take some. Yeah. Uh, and then this, this here is CNC half CNC with virtually the same control as the mill. It's a very versatile machine. Everything has sensor labels, but a whole lot more. Mm. You can cut threads on this with your eyes closed, internal, external, multi starts, metric imperial, any size you like, you don't care, it doesn't. Right. And then the rest of the stuff is just work in progress. Nice. Well, I am jealous of your workshop, Pat. I wish I could spend the time getting that sort of <laughs> Right. This is what I started And we put it on the pallet because we were going to sell it. But it's such a handy thing. It needs a bit of a clean, a bit of tea out. It's a nice chuck on it. Oh, yes. well, got, this little machine's got all sorts of chucks. So there's. So we've got another two layers here which we again don't use but we will do. The majority work. That's the digital relay, the ball you haven't put on the machine yet. Oh for the live? I go on that one. That is it might be the longest lathe I've ever seen. No, it's not very really big. It's only two metre. I've led a sheltered life. That is only two metres. The best thing about that is its rigidity. It is absolutely rock solid. Checo is just made, made Czechoslovakia. It's just made super, super strong. And it's also it's unusual for a set lathe. It's rapid in all directions. Very good it takes a massive cut. If you want, you can take a half inch, an inch on diameter in one go. But yeah. If you want to. You have to wear a hard hat then. <laughs> Alright. Big old saw there, we do get to use that every now and again. Yeah. Alright. Thanks for showing me around. I've so, a good tick over there. Which, which appreciate it. It's, um, it's an old one, but it's a good one. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to have a look around. Thank you very much. So, there you have it. Uh, Patrick's workshop. Fantastic thing. Uh, as I say, uh, links to his website and Facebook group are in the description. Uh, feel free to follow him on the Facebook channel or whatever because he posts videos uh, you know, most days of stuff he's been working on. Really nice stuff. And uh, he explains why he's done what he's done and all that. Yeah, really good. Um, I'm not in any way sponsored by Patrick, uh, just to make that clear. I've chosen him because of examples of his work and stuff he's done in the past. And uh, I went down and saw him and I like him. So there you go. Um, yeah, so uh, next episode, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do on the next episode. 
um, or think of something. There's plenty to be getting on with. Uh, but this Friday is Speedway Awards evening, so uh, I'm going to have a, probably have a hangover on Saturday. And next week I'm working away in the Netherlands. So might be a bit of time before the next update. We shall see. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, um, have a look at Patrick's channel. Loads of nice engine machinery stuff to be seen. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, uh, and I'll speak to you soon.